Exodus 33, verse number 12, the Bible says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not a pence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, now verses 12 through 16, Moses talking to the Lord. But it's about ready to pick up right now because the Lord's going to talk to Moses. You know, a lot of times we talk to the Lord, we whine and we cry and we come. But when the Lord speaks to us, you better be paying attention. Look what happens. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. Now, let me just stop here. You see that little word also? God had already done so many things that Moses had asked for. But just like God in his long suffering, he said, I'm going to do this also. Hmm? He said, For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, this is Moses speaking to God again. I mean, if that wasn't enough, when God said, I know thee by name, Moses should have come unglued right there. But here goes Moses. He's just like us. He's going to ask for more. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all, this is the Lord speaking to Moses, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me, and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless your holy name. Lord, we thank you for all the good singing we just enjoyed. Lord, we thank you for the Waters family. Lord, I'm thankful you're using them. Lord, their schedule's full. I'm thankful to the report of those four young ladies that got born again. I pray you'd continue to use them and the weeks to come and God I pray that Lord more be saved and saints of God will be refreshed and revived and God you'd continue to do work uh, God I'm thankful Lord to be back here at home tonight it's good to see our folks and Lord what a blessing to be able to fellowship a little bit before service uh, but Lord what even a bigger blessing to be able to worship you again with thy people uh, God, I pray now for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. Uh, God, you'd speak to our hearts. Uh, Lord, Brother Daniel brought it out. I know many have worked uh, this week and worked hard, and many have faced adversity. Uh, Lord, I do pray that God, uh, while sitting in the house of God, even though they're tired in body, you refresh their spirit. Uh, God, I pray that you'd begin to speak. Uh, and God, do something special for your folks uh, for being out on this Wednesday night. Uh, Father, I pray for Sister Janet. You'd help her. She's in the hospital. Uh, God, I pray for Sister Deborah. You'd touch her leg and help her. Uh, 
I pray for Miss Noreen's sister. God, you touch her. Uh, you know what she's uh, facing. Uh, I pray for Brother Bob. You'd help him. Uh, and God, others that have needs, that uh, God, you'd meet those needs. Uh, but God, for the next few minutes, may we truly uh, hear from heaven. Uh, and God, may we truly hold nothing back but give you unreservedly uh, the very best that we have to offer. Uh, God, may we worship you in spirit and in truth. Uh, may we exalt you. Uh, may we adore you. Uh, may we love on you for a little while. Uh, God, we do pray uh, that you'd minister a little grace around here tonight. Uh, God, you'd uh, minister a little mercy around here tonight. Uh, and God, you'd do a work in your people's hearts. Uh, God, you'd send revival these days. Uh, God, may we see this community turned upside down for the honor and glory of Jesus. Uh, and God, may it start tonight. Uh, Lord, when we leave this place, uh, uh, may this community take note that we've been with Jesus. Jesus. Uh, uh, Lord, may they not see us, uh, but may they see your effect on us. Uh, and God, may uh, 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 they too desire uh, uh, to come uh, and know the God of all glory. Uh, God, do something around here tonight, uh, supernatural. Uh, maybe there's somebody lost without God. Uh, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, maybe somebody uh, is in a valley. Uh, may they find the lily in their valley. Uh, uh, Lord, maybe somebody needs a good drink. Uh, may they find the fountain of living waters. Uh, uh, God, maybe somebody around here tonight uh, uh, just needs a touch from the Master's hand. Uh, God, whatever the need is, uh, God, we know you're the God of all glory. Uh, and God, nothing uh, is impossible with thee. Uh, God, I pray you'd minister to needs tonight uh, and you'd be exalted and glorified in our midst. Uh, and Father, use this unworthy vessel uh, and we'll bless you and praise you uh, for all that you do uh, for it's in the holy and wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things uh, Amen uh, Amen uh, I, In chapter number 32 uh, it is not uh, what you would say uh, a hallmark chapter in the history of Israel In chapter number 32 uh, Moses goes up on the mountain uh, and he communes with God uh, and on the mountain brother James uh, uh, God with his own finger uh, uh, writes uh, out the law of God on tables of stone uh, and Moses is up there 40 days uh, and 40 nights uh, meeting with almighty God uh, now uh, uh, friends uh, I would uh, uh, that if God did something so supernatural in our church uh, and he called me away for 40 days and 40 nights to commune with him uh, I would hope uh, uh, that folks would meet here at the church uh, and get a hold of the horns of the altar uh, and be praying that God uh, would pour it on me good uh, so when I came down from the mount uh, uh, in communing with God uh, I'd have a word from the Lord uh, and it'd be exactly what you need and what I need and what this community needs uh, uh, but that was not the case uh, over there in Israel's days while Moses was on the mount they said this we want not what's become of him and uh, brother Daniel you and I have been at this long enough we know that uh, uh, there are a lot of people that are not patient enough to wait on God and all of a sudden uh, the preacher said I'm going to do business with God if it doesn't fit in people's time schedule they get antsy and I've even known churches uh, that's went on ahead of the man of God and got in trouble. Hmm. Can I say that what happens is they reverted back to what they'd known in Egypt. Can I say, if you've been saved by the grace of God, Egypt's a picture of the world. Egypt has nothing left for you, friend. You've been saved, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, uh, and you're to press uh, toward the mark to the high calling of Christ. Uh, but unfortunately, Brother Aaron, without supervision, a lot of people end up back in Egypt. Can I say in chapter number 32, you find some sadistic debauchery. They cause Aaron, Moses' brother, to 
fashion a golden calf and they uh, uh, throw a big party and they get in, involved in all kinds of lewd and lascivious acts uh, and they uh, 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 absolutely act as wicked as you can think uh, while the man of God's up on the mountain dealing with God. Matter of fact, God wanted to smote them and Moses interceded till Moses come down saw it all and then Moses wanted to kill them. Huh? There was some sadistic debauchery. Can I say that not only that, there was some stern discipline. Moses grinded the golden calf to powder and made them drink it. Mm -mm. Lord have mercy, y'all think I'm rough. Uh, can I say that those who refused to repent, Brother Donald, the Levites took swords and went out and slew 3,000 that night. There was some stern discipline because of sadistic debauchery. But can I say uh, there was some saving decisions. Moses said, uh, uh, who's on the Lord's side among you? And there are some, Brother James, that decided I'm going to go on the Lord's side. Thanks be unto God, there's still few uh, that's on the Lord's side. Uh, hey, and they made that decision they going to follow after God. Uh, well, that brings us to chapter 33. Well, can I say in this chapter, they're, they're just launching out after what just transpired, and we find that conviction falls on their soul. Look, if you will, in verse number 4, the Bible says, And when the people heard these evil tidings, what evil tidings? God called them a stiff-necked people. Uh, when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned. And no man did put on him his ornaments. For the Lord had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are stiff-necked people. I will come up in the midst of thee in a moment, consume thee. Therefore now put off thine ornaments from thee, uh, that I may know what to do unto thee. Conviction came. Can I say, if the Holy Ghost lives in you, and by the way, if you're saved, he does. If you're not saved, he don't. But if the Holy Ghost lives in you and you do wrong, the Holy Ghost will let you know you're wrong. Uh, I, I worry, Brother Daniel, for folks that you never ever see them worship, you never see them smile, you never see them raise a hand, you never see them shed a tear, you never see anything out of them, uh, and they can live like the world and nothing ever bothers them. I worry about them folks. Uh, can I say this, that you can't even take a step towards sin that the Holy Ghost won't deal with you. He'll say, don't do it. Well, we see they fell under conviction. Now listen, they did not have the indwelling Holy Spirit like we do, but yet they became guilty before God. Uh, and we see conviction. And also in chapter number 33, we find that the cloud of God returns. Look with me in verse number 9. Now, if I had time, I'd read all this. don't have time, I'm going somewhere. And actually, in verses 7 and 8, you find the first camp meeting, the tent meeting, first tent meeting in, in the Bible. They set up a tent and had a meeting. Hmm? Moses and Joshua go out and under the tent, and God shows up. Look with me in verse number 9. huh? And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. Hmm? Now, the Lord had already promised he'd be a, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And when the cloud was on the tabernacle, the people of God knew God was there. Hmm? Aren't you glad we can come in here tonight with two or three gathered in his name? He'll be in the midst. Uh, but I'm glad for those nights when he just kind of steps out from behind the shadows and lets you know he's here. Uh, and he manifests himself. Uh, and folks all around know that God's in the house. Uh, we see the cloud returned. Uh, but then we find some confirmation. In verses 12 through 16, Moses begins to ask the Lord for some things. Now listen, Moses' face has been shaken. 
Moses in the last 24 hours has had to deal with some stiff-necked people he thought he never... I mean, wouldn't you think that if God delivered you out of Egypt with all the spoils of Egypt, then God parts the Red Sea and you walk across on dry ground uh, and then God takes you to bitter waters and makes them sweet uh, and God gives you and gives you and gives you and gives you. Uh, he gives you man, he gives you quail, he just takes care of you uh, over and over and over again. Wouldn't you think that crowd would follow with God? But then all of a sudden, boom, they've turned their backs on God. And Moses is just wanting to know from God, are we still on the right course? Have we found grace in thy sight? And we find in verse 17, Moses gets confirmation. Look what it says. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. He found grace, and he knew him by name. Moses got all he needed out of that verse right there. Hmm? Matter of fact, it did so much for Moses. Moses said, well, hallelujah, I think I'll ask something else. Look in verse number 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. When God's help, I want to preach for just a few minutes tonight from grace to glory from grace to glory you ever get grace down deep down in your soul and get a hold of what grace is uh, you'll start pursuing the glory of God uh, and friends if you ever get in the glory nothing else will ever satisfy you again uh, 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 hey uh, you know why some people get over it they've never got a hold of it uh, hey but if you ever get uh, from grace to glory uh, uh, nothing that this world offers will ever satisfy you again uh, uh, you'll long uh, uh, to stay in the glory of Almighty God from grace to glory. Now in grace can I say first of all there's redemption. We know that. We know we're saved by the grace of God. Uh, Ephesians 2.5 uh, Even when we were dead in sins hath quickened or made us alive hath quickened us together with Christ uh, by grace uh, uh, ye are saved. Uh, Ephesians 2.8 uh, For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Uh, it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast. Uh, uh, we're not saved by baptism. Uh, uh, we're not saved by shaking a preacher's hand. Uh, uh, we're not saved by how much money we put in plate. Uh, we're not saved by our works. Uh, we're saved by the grace of God through faith. Uh, hey, uh, uh, it's the unmerited favor of God. Uh, we don't deserve to be saved. Uh, only thing we deserve uh, is hell. Uh, but because of the grace of God, uh, we don't have to go to hell. Uh, hey, Jesus went to the cross of Calvary uh, and he tasted death for every man. Uh, he shed his royal redeeming redemptive blood uh, uh, to save the sinner that had call upon him uh, thank God I've been washed in the blood of Christ uh, thanks be unto God uh, hey uh, I was sitting in the church house uh, on the third Saturday night of March in 1974 uh, I wasn't looking for God uh, but he came looking for me uh, and I heard the preacher preach uh, if I'd call upon the name of the Lord he'd save me uh, and that night I had enough faith uh, to call uh, and when I called uh, the Lord answered uh, and he gave me his grace uh, and he saved me uh, and he changed my life uh, and what a blessing uh, I've been saved ever since uh, hey redeemed how I love to proclaim it uh, I've been redeemed rescued uh, ransomed uh, by the darling son of God uh, Hey, hallelujah, he loved me uh, and gave himself for me uh, and he saved my never dying soul uh, and he washed my sins away uh, and he sealed me with the Holy Spirit of promise uh, and I bless the Lord uh, for the good grace of God. Grace redeems us. In grace there's redemption. And in grace we have a relationship with the creator Amen. now he formed us in the womb he formed man out of the dust of the earth and created man in his own image and breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul but neighbor everybody's been born God formed them in the womb and can I say this God doesn't make any junk 
even though we're conceived in sin, even though uh, 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 in sin did our mothers bring us forth, uh, uh, God did create us. Uh, God's loved us with an everlasting love. Uh, and it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, and God wants to save everybody. huh? And when you get saved, you enter into a relationship with your Creator whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Right. One of the reasons the Jews hated Jesus is because he kept calling Jehovah Father because he was his Father. And can I say, mm, we have that same relationship because we've been made joint heirs to the throne of Christ. Not only was we born again, birthed into the family of God, we were adopted into the family of God. Uh, and one day at the marriage supper of the Lamb, we'll be married into the family of God. Uh, and we know God in the free pardon of sins uh, uh, because of the work of Christ and the Holy Ghost in our lives. Uh, and therefore, we can call him Father. And Brother Daniel was talking about some that just seemed to get a little bit more in. Your relationship to God is as close as you want it to be. It's as intimate as you desire. And can I say that it's God's design that we all have a personal, intimate, wonderful relationship with Him. He said if we'll draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh to us. He desires us to have a personal, connected relationship with Him. You ought to never have to get right with Him to talk with Him. You ought to talk with Him so much that when a prayer request comes in, you just say, oh, by the way, Lord, can you help sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so? He, he knows all about us. And He desires us to know all about Him. That's why he gave us his precious promises and the wonderful word of God. But can I say that the more you study about him and the more you walk with him, the more you learn him. You learn his voice. You learn his touch. You learn his desires. Can I say this relationship is a wonderful product of grace. We find in verse 17, he tells Moses, I know your name. Now, it ought to humble the socks off all of us to think that a thrice holy God whose throne's in the sides of the north and the earth is just a speck in the galaxies of galaxies and God can look at this planet uh, and look at the seven plus billion people on this planet and pick you out uh, and he knows your name. That ought to humble you. Mm. He not only knows your name, he knows your needs. Mm. Uh, can I help you? You don't even know your needs. You think you do. But he knows your needs from everlasting to everlasting. He knows what you need tonight, but he also knows what you need tomorrow. He knows what you need next week. Mm -mm. Uh, and can I say this? Uh, he not only knows that, he knows our nucleus. You say, what is that? He knows that deep down stuff that nobody else knows. He knows your aims, your desires, your focus. He knows uh, your devotions. He knows your very heart. And Jeremiah told us in Jeremiah 17 that the heart is deceitful, that no man knoweth it. But God knows your heart. He knows everything about you. Do you know him? Do you know his heartbeat? John did. John used to lay on his breast so much he knew the heartbeat of God. Mm -mm. Uh, see, it's an indictment against us because most of our prayer life is us asking God a big shopping list of everything we think we need and what we want instead of just asking for Him. When's the last time you went to Him and said, God, I don't need anything, I just want you? Mm -mm. See, this is all developed in grace. Grace, there's redemption, 
But there's also the relationship. It's only by the grace of God he lets us know him. Do you know how big of an act of grace of God you've even got the Bible? Hmm. Can I say this? But also in grace, there's rest. <laughs> Hebrews 4, 9 says, There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. I don't have to fret over everything that this world's fretting over. Yeah, hmm. I read this today. that since the inception of the United States of America, 1776, how many years ago that was? About 250. 25% of this nation's debt has been accumulated in the last two years. Hmm. I mean, the, the Biden mashed potato wagon is giving it away as fast as the Treasury can print it. The last relief bill for all the storms and everything, they gave $12 billion to Ukraine. Wasn't that a blessing? Hmm? Do you realize in the last year plus, they've given $500 billion to Ukraine? Can I help you something? Ukraine didn't have $500 billion since its inception. Hmm? You know why Ukraine's not interested? And, and Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, come out and said he will not negotiate with Putin. You know why? Because as long as he stays at war, America's going to give him money. Huh? And Zelensky's uh, he's he's living on the high hog. Hmm? Yeah. At your my expense. Now I've said all that, say this. All that's going on in this world. Ask me how much sleep I've lost over that. Yeah. Amen. Good pastor. Hmm? Huh? All that grouchy Fauci tried to do and all that uh, this country's been through in the last two years. Uh, you realize two years ago America had the strongest economy in all the world uh, and tonight America's in an upheaval? Ask me how much sleep I've lost. Because there remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. You see, I don't have roots real deep in this world. My treasure's over on the other side. Uh, can I say that I hate seeing some of the things go on in this nation that's going on, and I hate the deception, but I also know the Antichrist is going to have it all anyway, and I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to glory. And the trumpet could sound tonight. I'm at rest in the Lord because grace has been imputed to my life. You see, when you have grace, the cares of this world don't become your cares. Mm. I know people, I mean, they take, they take tums like I take M&Ms, man. I'm talking about they claim to be saved, going to heaven, man. They got ulcers like you wouldn't believe. Because they're all worried about their 401k and they're worried about uh, 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 what Biden's doing here. Biden don't even know what he's doing. Why are you worried about it? Huh? And they're worried about this problem, worried about that problem. They're all uh, got, got their panties in a wad over everything. Uh, hey, uh, uh, friend, quit looking around. Start looking up. Uh, live in the grace of God. Uh, you'll find rest for your soul. Mm. Listen. I read all the same statistics everybody else reads. I read how, how much everything costs now and how much interest rates and all that. But you know what? I've still got all the food I need to eat. Every time I need to put gas in my vehicle, I'm putting gas in my vehicle. And by the way, I don't have electric vehicles. All my vehicles got V8s. Uh, listen. I don't fret over any of it. Every time I have a need, needs uh, every need supply. That's all I could say. Uh, God's been good to me. Uh, hey, I'm not fretting over it all. Amen. I'm enjoying the good grace of God. But you see, until you let grace really get developed in you, where you got the relationship and the rest because of the redemption you have. If you don't get grace, you'll never get the glory. Amen. That's why so many Christians, they have to come to church. 
I don't have to come to church. I get to come to church. Huh? Church is not something I endure. It's something I enjoy. Can I say that the Christian life is not a tumultuous thing to me? It's a joyful thing to me. And the reason a lot of people uh, are so stressed out in their Christian life is they hadn't really got a hold of grace yet. Or grace hadn't got a hold of them. But can I say, when you get a hold of grace, and when you realize he knows you by name, then you can ask for glory. And wouldn't you like to see a little glory? Amen. Brother Donald, wouldn't you like to get in the glory? Boy, I tell you, I've been in some meetings where it got so high, I thought, oh, Lord, let it keep going on. You remember that Friday night down at Rockies this year? When Caleb got done preaching, I looked at my wife and said, how can it get any better than that? And then here come Cody, and we went to another stratosphere. I'm thinking, glory. Huh? I, I just, I didn't want it to end. Huh? I like being in the glory. There's nothing like being in the glory. So preacher, how do you get in the glory? Well, you see, you got to be in grace. But to be in grace, you have to be for glory. There's difference. Now for glory, first of all, you got to understand there's rejection. Not everybody likes being around the glory. Matter of fact, most people don't like being around the glory. Uh, the glory scares a lot of people. Mm. You see, you can't put out there on the marquee what you're going to preach on two weeks from now and want to be in the glory. Mm. Uh, you can't... Uh, uh, pick out ahead of time how many songs you're going to sing and who's going to pray and when we're going to take up the offering. You see, because when the glory hits, everything's off the table. Mm. And not everybody wants the glory because we like to feel like we're in control. Well, here's how much control you're in. Why don't you just add some inches to your height? Why don't you change your spots, leper? You're not in control of anything. Hmm? No. When you realize who is in control, and you realize the closer you get to him, the more of his glory you'll be around, then you, you long for that. But people are scared to death of the glory because you don't know how to act in the glory. And you're afraid you might act like Phil. You haven't seen Phil in the glory. I have. He runs laps. He is real scary in the glory. Uh, but you see, in the glory there's rejection, not from man, from God. Look at your, in, in your Bible, look in verse 20. Verse 19, he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Now look in verse 19, the Lord speaks to Moses. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Mm, verse 20, and he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. The Lord said, I'll show you my goodness, but you can't see my glory. Can I say, for glory there's rejection. And when the Lord tells some of us know that's the end of our Christianity right there. We're all just shot and we go back and we sulk. But you see, if you want glory, you got to press on, friend. Hmm? Uh, Moses didn't tuck tail and run. Hmm? Moses said, I want to see your glory. He said, you can't. Moses didn't leave. Moses has done got grace down. Moses isn't afraid to ask for glory. You see, for glory there's rejection, but there's also resolve. Look with me in verse number 21. And the Lord said, now he's already said, I'll show you my goodness, but you can't see my face. But the Lord didn't stop talking. See, some of you tune him out. Keep listening. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and thou 
shalt stand upon a rock. Can I say that there was rejection? You can't see my face. But there is a place by me. And thou shalt stand upon a rock. Uh, Can I say there's some resolve there? Uh, Now you and I that are saved do know that we are standing on the rock of ages. His name is Jesus. uh, And we know he's seated at the right hand of the Father. uh, And he ever liveth to do what? Make intercession for us. Uh, Hey, uh, we can't see the Lord's face, but we got the rock. uh, And there is some resolve. uh, Where to stand on the rock? Uh, uh, Friend, you're never going to see the glory sitting on the premises. Uh, You've got to get to the rock uh, and stand on the rock and let the rock intercede for you. Uh, Let the rock mediate for you. Uh, Let the rock uh, uh, do his office work for you. Uh, Hey, if you can get to the rock uh, and be resolved to stay on the rock, uh, hey, you're headed in the right direction to see the glory. Uh, For the glory, there's rejection. There's resolve. And by the way, without resolve... One will never experience the glory of God. Too many people quit right before the blessing comes. Hmm. Sometimes God just wants to see how hungry you are for it. Hmm. And can I say for the glory, not only is there resolve, there's restlessness. Hmm. Look at verse 22. said, And it shall come to pass... While my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cleft of the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. The Lord says, you, you can stand by me on the rock and then my glories are coming by. But I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock. I'm going to put my hand over the cleft. There's some restlessness Say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, before you see the glory, you may have to face some distress. You may have to face some discouragement. You will have to face some darkness. He put him in the cleft and put his hand over it. You know what? That's dark. Sometimes it's got to get so dark you're about ready to give up but hang in there because when things get the darkest he tends to shine the brightest let me put it into this term for you the apostles they faced pain they faced peril they even faced the threat of prison before Pentecost came they hid in the upper room then Jesus appeared to them. Then Jesus took them out and ascended and told them, go, wait till you be endued with power. But those ten days they were shut up in that upper room praying for the, for the comforter to come. Uh, there was a decree sent out that any of his crowd that'd be found, they'd be imprisoned. Mm-mm. They had to face pain, peril, and prison before Pentecost came. And my dear friends... It's about as dark as it's ever been in my Christian life. Churches after churches after churches are struggling just to keep on going. Uh, uh, The church I just preached revival in, I had several of them people say, Preacher, after COVID, people didn't come back. That's going on all over the places. People's missions budgets are being cut. Uh, Churches uh, uh, are being split. Uh, uh, There are power moves and power struggles in churches going on. There's problems in churches. Uh, Those of you who don't get around, uh, you don't see much of it. Uh, uh, Talk to Brother Daniel. I'm sure he'll tell you churches he used to go to be packed out. Uh, uh, Tonight they're sitting half full. Uh, 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 Some uh, are sitting uh, even less than that. Uh, Churches are struggling. Preachers are leaving. Uh, People are quitting. Uh, uh, Friend, it's about as dark... Uh, as it's been uh, uh, in a long time in Christianity. Uh, Hey, but hang in there, neighbor. Uh, Be resolved. Uh, uh, It might get a little restless, uh, uh, but if you stay steadfast and true, uh, he who is faithful and true will show up, uh, and you'll see his glory. Hallelujah. Notice, if you will, the revelation. 
verse number 23 says, And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Can I say a dark place led to God's glory? In God's glory, you'll find special perception. You'll see things in ways you've never seen them before. In God's glory, you'll find special privileges. Not everybody gets to the glory of God. But those that do, it changes their life forever. It gives them an appetite for spiritual things that a lot of people never get. And in God's glory, you'll find special peace. Now, Moses sought for God's face, and God showed him his glory. The key to seeing God's glory is to seek his face. When's the last time you say, Lord, I just want to see you? Uh, we know the remedy for revival, if my people is called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, heal their land. We know that going frontwards and backwards. And can I say, most people, they'll admit... Lord, I need revival. I'm not where I should be. They'll humble themselves. And some people will even pray, Lord, send revival. And if the Lord shows them something in their life that he's not pleased with, they're willing to turn from it. But that element that we leave out is the most important. Seek my face. Didn't say, seek revival. He said, seek my face. Now, why would God tell us to seek his face when he told Moses nobody could see his face? Because God wants us to see his glory. Mm -hmm. He didn't say seek Sidney Weaver's face, and I, I love Brother Sidney. He was a great preacher. But if you come out to see Sidney, you're going to miss God. So it didn't, didn't say seek the singer's face I love, I love hearing brother James sing he'll be singing during revival didn't say come seek him seek the Lord's face right. let me ask you do you know the grace of God how developed are you in the grace of God how's your relationship because of grace it's a preacher I'm thankful for the grace of God. When was the last time you saw His glory? Really, is this all there is to it? Church, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, is this it? I hope not. When was the last time you said, Lord, I'm not going to be satisfied until I see you? Because when you get there, you're headed in the right direction. The only reason we can seek His glory and know His grace is because God is merciful and gracious to who He chooses to be merciful and gracious to. And He has shed His grace on us. Shouldn't we take full advantage of it? Hmm. God help us. If all we're satisfied with coming to church coming to church is just part of the thrill it's excitement it's part of the whipped cream on top of the ice cream but I want the cherry I want him when was the last time you saw his face let's all stand brother Clint I tell you what brother Daniel come get a song of invitation if you enjoy if you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.